May our next witness is Ms. Susan Martinek, President of the Coalition for Life of Iowa. Until her recent retirement, Ms. Martinek was founder and manager of Seems Easy, a clothing alteration company. Ms. Martinek, you're recognized for five minutes. Good morning. I am Sue Martinek, President of Coalition for Life of Iowa, based in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Coalition for Life of Iowa is a grassroots, low-budget public charity founded in 2004 to provide prayer, education, and related activities about the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Throughout our history, we have organized and sponsored educational forums and engaged in peaceful, prayerful activities. In 2008, we sought 501c3 tax-exempt recognition from the IRS by filling a complete IRS Form 1023 application. I speak today so that what happened to us, the, IRS, the IRS's demonstrated harassment, improper questions, and intolerance toward our message may not happen to others. The IRS's questions centered on our educational and potential political activities, our prayer groups, and our signage. On April 27, 2009, IRS agent Ms. Richards out of the Cincinnati office sent me a letter asking about our educational forums, whether we were trying to influence legislation or influence political campaigns. We had already answered no on the IRS Form 1023 application. I responded May 14th, answering all her questions fully. In the subsequent weeks, IRS agent Richards contacted me by telephone a few times, asking more questions about our activities. Some questions I asked her she was unable to answer and would put me on hold and check with her superior or superiors. In June of 2009, Ms. Richards told me verbally that we needed to send in a letter with the entire board signatures stating that under perjury of law, we would not picket protest or organize picket and protest outside of Planned Parenthood. Upon receiving such a letter, she indicated that the IRS would allow our application to go through. So we sent a follow-up letter to the IRS respectfully requesting where in Form 1023 or elsewhere it stated that we could not protest at Planned Parenthood. The IRS never answered our question. Instead, the IRS continued questioning us. On June 22, 2009, IRS agent Richards sent us additional written requests as follows. Please explain how all of your activities, including the prayer meetings held outside of Planned Parenthood, are considered educational as defined under 501c3. Organizations exempt under 501c3 may present opinions with scientific or medical facts. Please explain in detail the activities at the prayer meetings. Also, please provide the percentage of your organization that spends on prayer groups as compared with the other activities of the organization. Please explain in detail the signs that are being held up outside of Planned Parenthood and explain how they are considered educational. When we met at our next board meeting, we were all disappointed with the IRS's request. We had worked so hard to get the application correct. We had a local attorney skilled with this process helping us. We understood that we could hold up signs with educational information about abortion and the sanctity of life without the IRS qu questioning their validity. We never thought we would have to defend our prayer activities. As Christians, we knew we needed to pray for a better solution to unplanned pregnancy than abortion. Why not at the source? Personally, I wondered, who fights the IRS? What would the repercussions be? Would there even be a hope to win? Since we focused on educational forums and not picketing or protesting, some board members were willing to sign the requested letter, but others refused to sign a statement that unfairly restricted First Amendment rights. We had very little funds. One board member suggested we contact the Thomas More Society, a public interest law firm. They helped the little guy, that was us, with legal problems. They took our case, 
and found us an attorney that specializes in this area. Fortunately, with their help, and after we submitted a lengthy letter detailing the law and our constitutional rights, the IRS granted us tax-exempt status just one week after our attorney, Sally Wagonmaker, sent in that letter to the IRS agent Richards. No more mention was made of the IRS required board statement about protesting and picketing outside of Planned Parenthood. We were fortunate, but, we, but not all are. Our story has a happy ending. Donors can claim charitable tax deductions for their contributions. With their help, we can carry out our educational and religious activities to promote respect for human life, such as the March for Life and 40 Days for Life. Coalition for Life of Iowa seeks to save lives, help others, and improve our community. May our story of the IRS's overreaching spur reform of its practices better treatment of our charitable institutions, and con continued protection of First Amendment right freedoms. Thank you for letting me tell our story.